Well, hey, here we go, Phil Long family. Scott, you all here again, uh, saying welcome to another Tuesday afternoon virtual coffee chat. And I would say thanks for taking a couple minutes of your day. And uh, today we're going to talk about diabetes, uh, glucose levels, and then the long term health effects that can occur if you don't manage um, your glucose levels. So, uh, before we get started, if you ever were, glucose is called blood sugar, and you can see actually see a picture of what it looks like from a molecular standpoint there on the bottom left picture. You can see the kind of the gray pictures. Those are carbon. The white ones are hy uh, hydrogen. The uh, red balls are oxygen. But that's actually what a glucose molecule looks like inside your body. I thought that was kind of neat. Put my nerd hat on for that one. Anyways, thanks for everybody showing up today. And again, we're going to talk about what diabetes is, uh, what is glucose and what it does in the body, how does it work. We're going to talk about risk factors associated with diabetes, the symptoms, and then some behavioral and lifestyle habits that you can integrate into your life so that you minimize your likelihood of getting diabetes um, or managing it if unfortunately you do get it because uh, about 10% of the country has it. Well, uh, before we get started, as usual, I want to say thank you very much to Kangaroo Coffee for being our sponsor for the virtual coffee chats, and you can definitely tell autumn's in the air today, so if you're in the springs, stop off and get yourself a nice hot cup of joe on the way home. So, again, we've got our quarter hour of wellness power to go today, and so uh, I'm excited about today's conversation. Again, real quickly, medical doctors, MDs, and DOs. They're a little bit different than my doctor to PhD. They, they prescribe medicine and they do surgeries and they charge health insurance and so on. Um, I don't do any of that. I uh, try to help people through lifestyle change, behavior modification. And uh, at the end of the day, we're both trying to help each other. And so we can uh, augment each other in what we do. Always as usual, we've got our little disclaimer and we're not gonna talk about fitness too much today, but I do wanna point out that if you're on our Phil Long plan, Please get your annual physical done through our Care Here clinic or your personal provider. If you get blood work done with that and review that, you can actually get a premium reduction uh, on the Phil Long insurance for doing that. And if you're not on our plan, please set an appointment with your regular doctor. Uh, that falls under preventive care, so there should be no charge for you to get an annual physical and blood work through, uh, through your clinicians. But get that, get that annual physical so that if there is something that they can identify, we can catch it as early as we possibly can and help to manage that situation. So, well, let's get after it. What is diabetes? Well, actually, it's a condition in which the body cannot or does not properly process the food that we use as energy for the body. And I'm really pretty much particularly talking about carbohydrates. You know, there's carbohydrates, proteins, fats, vitamins, minerals, and water. Those are the six nutrients our body needs. But, um, Carbohydrates are unique. Carbohydrates, really, its only job in the body is to provide energy. And your body can convert carbohydrate into what's called glucose, blood sugar. Um, but as a result of what kind of carbohydrate is, it goes about doing that in a little bit different fashion. So, um, again, almost all carbohydrates that we eat, um, whether it's an apple, some protein, but very little fat has... Um, the ability to be converted into glucose or again blood sugar but one thing that's interesting is that you can store glucose it's called glycogen in really only two places your liver and then in skeletal muscle and skeletal muscle is the muscle that we have conscious control over like your bicep flex my bicep or I stand up and I'm using my quads and one thing that I do want to point out that's kind of interesting when we talked way back about the five components of fitness is that as you get more physically fit, believe it or not, your glycogen stores increase. And so you can actually store more carbohydrate, which is absolutely the most crucial nutrient uh, for metabolism. Uh, and you can store that the more physically fit you are. So I thought that was kind of uh, neat and worth pointing out. Now, let's talk about this thing called the glycemic index and the glycemic load. Very, very much related to carbohydrate intake. And um, based on how the rate or how fast your body can convert a food into glucose and the amount or the volume of food that you take in influences these two values and it also determines your blood sugar level. So um, the, uh, 
the glycemic index measures how fast or how quickly uh, glucose gets in your bloodstream. And if you're eating a high glycemic index foods, it gets in there very fast and uh, it causes a spike. And we really don't want these sugar spikes. Uh, on the other hand, a glycemic load, uh, it pertains to how long, how, how long in time this elevated blood sugar stays in, in your uh, in your veins, excuse me, in your arteries. And between the two, uh, again, it influences quite a bit how your body functions. So you can see on the right-hand side kind of the definitions there. And um, uh, with that, before we go into much start, I think I've got a little quiz that I'd like to ask you all about. I've told you a little bit about blood sugar, but I'd like to take you a little quiz. And um, you're looking at a food label of three different types of instant oatmeal. And what I'd like to ask you is from a diabetic perspective, which one of these food choices is the healthiest food choice of the instant oatmeal that you see here to the right? So you can put in the chat box, put in your answers, kind of take a look at that, read a food level. And if you can tell me which one's the best and why it's the best, uh, we've got a little goodie for you coming up uh, after everything's said and done today in the coffee chat. But here's an example of the, the GI in the GL uh, comments that I was making reference to before. And every food has a glycemic value to it. And if, if the glycemic index of a food is greater than 70, that's a food that kind of a red flag pops up. It, it's got so much sugar in it, it can cause a, a, a glucose spike. And uh, we want to try to minimize those spikes. So you can see like uh, white bread's got a 100 score, whole wheat bread 71. Um, spaghetti's got a lower value. But if you go over here to the right-hand side where you see the GI and the GL, the glycemic index and the load, um, if you, between the two, I would take a look at the glycemic load. And if your value is under 20, then that's a probably a, a perfectly healthful food choice. If it's greater than 20, again, you want to take a look at it and you know, you'll probably maybe portion size it, mix that somehow with a protein or a fat so that um, you're not just getting this big, huge sugar spike because really what it comes down to is, depending on how much glucose gets into your blood system or your bloodstream, um, it causes a reaction. Your, your pancreas actually has these things called beta cells in them and they produce insulin based exclusively on how much glucose is in your bloodstream. And if you've just had, say, an apple in and of itself, there's gonna be a lot of glucose in the bloodstream and the insulin is gonna be released from those beta cells because here's here's what happens glucose has to get inside your cells to be metabolized and when it's in your bloodstream that's not happening and so insulin this little hormone it's kind of like holds the hand of glucose and then they cross the altar into the intercellular membrane um, together but again uh, glucose cannot get into the cell unless insulin's around and when your body does not produce enough insulin, again, from damaged beta cells, um, you just don't have enough produced insulin. And so you end up with more uh, elevated blood sugar in your bloodstream. And the other thing, uh, type 2 uh, glucose is due to insulin resistance, where your body produces insulin, but the door to get into that intercellular uh, membrane, yeah, the door is rusted, the hinge is rusted, and it's kind of hard to get in. So... Again, you have excess amounts of blood sugar in the bloodstream, and by definition, that's what diabetes is, elevated blood sugar. Now, um, although it's not a cardiovascular disease itself, if you do have diabetes, and again, about 10% of the country does, um, your likelihood of developing cardiovascular disease goes way up. So we want to try to manage that. Even if you have diabetes, uh, it's really important to manage that. And one of the ways that you do that is you might see people with these little finger pricks and um, uh, you can prick your blood and find out what your blood sugar is and a, a healthy blood sugar is really between about 80 and 120 milligrams per deciliter with 100 being the average. One thing I do want to point out though again even though the blood finger stick you can tell immediately an acute blood value um, a, probably a more beneficial and representative assessment is a blood draw it's called an A1C and they can go back and look at an average of about the last 60 to 90 days of your blood sugar and make sure that it's not doing all these spikes and all this stuff. And you can help better manage that. Because again, this, this big sugar spike in diabetes 
promotes uh, weight gain, uh, and it actually damages the cellular lining uh, of the blood system so that it becomes damaged. Uh, and once it becomes damaged and uh, oxygen and nutrient transfer can't place, it actually dies. It gets gangrene, if you've heard of that. And once you get gangrene, it's, it's, it's not a good situation to have. So I wanted to make sure I told you about that A1C. Now, risk factors for diabetes. Well, for type 1, there's really not a whole lot of risk factors. It's genetics. And like I mentioned, your immune system, for whatever reason, seems to attack the beta cells, which damages your ability to make insulin. Well, now, type 2 is a whole different ball game. Um, there's really not a lot of genetic influence, although there is some. Uh, but there is some environmental cues and really lifestyle factors uh, play a huge role in developing diabetes. And I'd like to go over some of the big correlations or the big relationships. But ethnicity, if you're a minority, an African-American, Latino, uh, Native American, compared to the Anglo white man, um, your likelihood of getting diabetes is about twice of that uh, as, as a you know, European American or a, a white guy. Um, if you have an elevated um, body composition or if, if your BMI is greater than 30, and we can measure that here, um, in healthy habits if you'd like. But if your BMI is greater than 30, that's, that's also a significant health risk for developing diabetes. Uh, again, man-made carbs. Uh, we just talked about the glycemic index and load. Foods that are high on those um, are things that you want to kind of manage and look out for. Inactivity is very common in here in America. About 30% of Americans are what we call sedentary. And you know, imagine we come to work all day, we sit down at our desk, we go home, we watch television. We're really not that active and the sedentary lifestyle is also a significant contributor to diabetes. Um, about 80% of us don't get the appropriate amount of exercise across the country and, and it's again, it's problematic. And the whole series we're talking about is chronic disease. And obviously as we get older, uh, age is an influence and it takes time. If we eat poorly and we've got high blood sugar over the years, that damages the, the lumen, the lining uh, of the artery. And again, then that causes it to not be able to function and, and get the nutrient transfer. And so you have tissue death or necrosis uh, or the gangrene comment that I talked about earlier. And then there's a couple of other things. Uh, PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome, that's for girls. Uh, women get that. Um, and it's related to kind of like endometriosis. There's really not a lot of symptoms to that, ladies, um, but it is something legitimate. And when the next time you go to have your annual female exam, talk to your clinician about PCOS because um, it can be a, a problem, but it doesn't really show a lot of symptoms. Gestational diabetes, if you uh, got diabetes uh, when you were pregnant, um, the likelihood of that child getting diabetes does have an increased risk also, as well as hypertension or having high blood pressure. Those are all risk factors for uh, developing uh, the, di the diabetes that we're talking about. And I kind of get a kick out of the cartoon here. The, the humongo meal comes with your choice of two sides, heart disease, high blood pressure, diabetes, or obesity. Which one do you want? And that truly is, that's kind of the American diet. Um, uh, we don't eat that well. And as a result, you know, we've got chronic health issues, but you know, I'm not saying anything new. Well, here's some symptoms of diabetes, and uh, these are kind of subtle, but probably the one that's most relevant or that you can identify the most is a sudden increase in thirst and excessive urination. I mean, that's a classic telltale sign. Um, and some people have asked me before, can, can dogs, can cats and animals, can they get diabetes? And the answer to that is yes, they can. Um, increase in hunger and eating habits, especially sugar cravings, uh, just want to eat sugary foods. Uh, an unintended weight loss and feeling fatigued or tired all the time uh, are also classic symptoms, but they're not quite as obvious, I guess, to come to your, your cognizant um, mindset. Uh, blurred vision is really common also. So if you see something, uh, you know, we should also get our uh, eyes looked at every year, just like our annual physical. So please get that done. Uh, um, if you ever get a sore or a scab or something, it doesn't heal very well. Uh, that's a risk. Frequently getting infections, you're getting sick all the time. And then getting these kind of platchy, kind of dark colorations to your skin, uh, that happens too. And what's actually happening is you're having a ruptured coronary 
excuse me, ruptured capillaries right at the surface of your skin. And that darkness is actually blood flow that's seeping out of your capillary beds. And that's, that's actually how diabetes starts. It, it damages the capillaries. And that's where the nutrient transfer and all that takes place. So how do you prevent diabetes in your lifetime? Again, it's most of it's lifestyle based, but I'd love to give you some great suggestions. And I get, if I could find, I could be a healthy person if you'd stop finding things wrong with me, doc. I mean, my goodness, I come in every year. It's like getting a free 29 point car inspection. You got 29 opportunities to find something wrong with me. But again, I can't emphasize blood work, annual physicals can identify this stuff before it manifests itself and becomes, you know, a, a significant chronic disease. But once again, one of the best things you can do is do not overeat food, especially the man-made carbs, the processed foods, uh, the high GI, GL new foods we just made reference to. Those really, really stress um, your cardiovascular system and your body's ability to process foods from an apple to glucose to something that we can use. It causes that internal inflammation that we covered, covered a few weeks ago. So really try to eat nutrient dense, raw foods, high fiber, and then quality proteins if you can. You know, fast food's good every now and then, but not all the time. That's just, um, it's not conducive to long-term good health. Drink as much water as you can, that's really important. Try to get that BMI score under 30, we made reference to that already. And then try to have good physical fitness. You don't have to go to a gym. Um, but walk the dog on a regular basis, play with your children, uh, garden, do things that are cause physical activity to happen. And if you can get about six to eight hours of that in per week, that's as good as going to a gym. Try to minimize that sedentary lifestyle as believe it or not, an inactive lifestyle is just as bad as tobacco use. And you can see, I mean, we're always yelling at people about tobacco use. So try to be, try to get some activity in your life. And then again, don't mention, excuse me, don't use tobacco, pretty straightforward. And the most important one is to choose your parents wisely because genetics do play an important part, part of that, of, of diabetes. And um, I'm, I'm joking a little bit, but, um, you know, just be careful because diabetes, it can really damage you, uh, especially once it's developed itself, uh, manifested itself in your life. It's just not a good disease to have. So with that, um, October 20th, uh, we got two more coffee chats going on, vitamin deficiencies due to poor diet habits. With That's going to be an eye-opener, folks, next week. I'm going to kind of show you the food that we eat has calories, but it really doesn't have a lot of nutritional value. And then on October 27th, we've got a special guest, Mike Mazzola. He's going to come and talk to us about home health and wellness for your health uh, for your home. You might not think there's home wellness, but there is, there's a ton of it. And he's going to share it, give us some expert advice on that. So as usual, I want to say thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to look here in the chat room and see what we've got. If you got some ideas, oops, I hit the wrong button. Sorry about that. Let me go back to that. What's going on here? Sorry. All right, there we go. Sorry about that. I hit the wrong button. I need to hit the more button there we go let's see what we got uh banana because it has fewer sugars uh that's correct diane there's also no added sugars uh amanda banana less sugar uh william banana yep melody uh the cinnamon swirl that's actually lower carb and lower sugar it's not the lowest it's better than the one on the right but you'll see that the banana one has no added sugars and it's got 29 grams of sugar versus 34 and 35. So when you're worried about diabetes, you want to look at the sugar content uh, and make sure that that's not too high. So, hey, thanks again, everybody, for talking today. Uh, sorry for blocking you out there. Uh, but we will see you next week at the same virtual coffee chat time and the same virtual coffee chat channel. So take care, everybody. God bless. And thanks for tuning in today. Oh, got one more. Let's see what we got. Two more. Why not? Oh, you're very welcome, everybody. Hey, thanks. Great day to everyone else. Bye-bye.